Welcome you back, everybody, to Sports Talk. Here we go on a Monday, coming your way live from Border City Ale House, 1506 Lee Trevino, where we are going to be hanging out with you all the way up until kickoff for the aforementioned Monday Night Football with the Kansas City Chiefs and the New Orleans Saints. And uh, you better believe we got a lot to catch up on. A lot to get you ready for for uh, this matchup. In fact, so many great giveaways. I love that. And uh, as always, when you might imagine the shows like uh, we do out here on Mondays, we always prioritize giving away some of the best things you will find uh, anywhere. And thanks to our friends at All That Music and Video Collectors Marketplace, Located, again, at the Fountains of Farah, uh, just below the Best Buy parking lot, we have done just that. And, man, it is terrific. When I look at uh, some of the prizes that we have uh, for people today, we're going to be giving away some keychain bottle openers for the Chiefs and the Saints. I've got a New Orleans Saints lanyard to give away. I have Blu-rays, Super Bowl Blu-rays for both the Chiefs and the Saints. And how about the Pop Funko figure of Patrick Mahomes? You better believe it. The beauty of all that music and video collector's marketplace is they've got something for everybody. You know, this is just an example of what they can get for sports fans. Between the keychains and the lanyards and the DVDs and the Pop Funkos, they've got it all. Not to mention, they also have vintage and 180-gram vinyl. They've got an incredible selection of posters, novelty items, their boutique, uh, and, you know, the holidays are right around the corner. You want to get a head start, you can do it at all that music and video collector's marketplace. Also, I want to thank the Kenya Tio Softball Booster Club for dropping off some comic strip tickets that we're going to be giving away for this Thursday, October the 10th. In fact, uh, this is terrific because uh, the doors are going to open at 6.30. The show's at 7.30. And uh, all proceeds are going to be benefiting the Kenya Teo High School softball boosters. So huge thank you to the Kenya Teo boosters for giving us these benefit tickets to Thursday's comic strip show where they're going to feature comedians from The Tonight Show, HBO, Showtime, Comedy Central, and uh, BET Comedy. And uh, that's going to be a big show for that. So, yeah, I'm excited. And all that will be uh, given away here today as well. And I also, as if that's not enough, golf at Horizon Golf and Conference Center, good for a cart, two greens fees at... uh, 16,000 Ashford Street, and again, our thanks to uh, Horizon Golf for setting us up with all these great prizes. So, yes, we are absolutely loaded this week, and we've got a lot to cover, a lot to talk about uh, on the show today, and uh, also want to welcome back to the program Adrian Broadus, who was with us again, uh, at, you know, like he always is, last week. But before we bring Adrian on, I do want to wish Adrian and the entire Broadus family uh, all of our heartfelt condolences on the passing of his grandmother, Martha Lou, who had passed away just a few days back. Uh, someone that when you read her story, and uh, it was in yesterday's El Paso Times, what a legacy of uh, her, her kids, her grandkids, what she accomplished. And I learned something. I learned that she not only graduated at Texas Western, but she was a proud minor cheerleader after going on to then teach at Irvin and Tech High School at UTEP and El Paso Community College. Adrian, you should be pretty uh, proud and impressed. What a legacy for your grandmother. And I know uh, a very full life, a very proud life, 
And uh, again, our condolences uh, on the passing uh, of uh, your grandma, Martha Lou. Thank you, Steve. Um, you know, it's uh, been great to get a lot of uh, people to reach out and, you know, a lot of people who knew her. A lot of people who've called on this radio station saying, hey, I never knew who you were, but I knew your grandma. Uh, and that's a, that's a really cool thing. I mean, she, her legacy will live on. She had, uh, you know, four great kids, uh, eight grandkids. So, you know, she, her legacy will live on through all of us. And, uh, you know, it was just a, it, it was a, a really tough weekend uh but i appreciate you and i i appreciate this way to start things off she'll uh, always be remembered here there's no doubt no doubt and uh, like i told you an incredible legacy i think that's the most important thing look at somebody's life and all the lives that they've touched that tells you everything you need to know and uh, your grandmother was definitely that kind of person and uh listen you should be pretty proud because there's probably a ton of people in the broadest family all of her kids and grandkids you can look at and realize that hey she was, uh, you know, she helped uh, bring everybody up, raise everybody, and uh, what a legacy, man. That is, that is absolutely awesome. So, um, you know, that's one of the things I'll say when, when you have someone who we've just lost and then you start to look back at their life and everybody that they touched, that's the ultimate tribute. It really is. And I can just uh, tell you that, yep, she is one of those people that touched a ton of lives here in El Paso and other places, and, uh, yeah, um, you know. What can I tell you? And she probably would have it no other way than to you uh, for you to be uh, starting us off today with us. A lot to cover. And on a Cowboys victorious Sunday night that endured a 90-minute rain delay, Adrian, we've got Upset City with a former NMSU uh, quarterback who not only led the Aggies to a bowl game, but he led Vandy to one of the great upsets in college football history on Saturday. That happened over the weekend. All the baseball playoff games, all the drama, and everything else that's happened around the sports world, it was a wild, wild weekend uh, in, in all the sports. Yeah, what a weekend in sports, Steve. There was just a lot of things going on. Uh, I love the baseball playoffs, by the way. I thought every game was great. The Dodgers-Padres se- uh, series is living up to everything. Even yesterday, the score ends up being a little lopsided in that one, but it was the perfect entertainment for uh, all that thunderstorm delay as we were getting ready for Steelers-Cowboys yesterday. It felt like all the fireworks in the baseball game really happened while that game was in a delay. And and once that game started to really kick off yesterday, um, the game became out of reach for the Dodgers in that one. But that game one was incredible. I love the first game uh, between the Royals and Yankees. That was really fun to watch as well. A lot, a lot of great college football storylines, including uh, the Pavia upset and Tennessee yep. gets knocked off as well so you talk about three teams in the top 10 who get knocked off by unranked opponents that was crazy in itself but you know the biggest takeaway i took away from yesterday that i was anxious to talk to you about steve is man what what's up with aaron Rodgers? what is him crawling on the sideline looking like he's uh 60 years old what's happening there in london first off i can't believe i can't believe i woke up at 7 30 to watch that okay that's the first thing i i was very tempted to just go back to bed because I didn't have a great feeling about it. But I woke up early just in time to watch that. And yesterday was a rough day. Like, look, the Jets lost. Aaron Rodgers does look like he's 60. That's what happens when your offensive line doesn't protect you and you get destroyed. And he took a beating yesterday. And when he did throw, he didn't look, in, he didn't look his normal self. He looked like, uh, you know, he just didn't have that same rhythm, that same confidence he seemed like every other Jets quarterback I've watched uh, off and on over the last 30 years. And that was uh, that was part of the problem. And then you've got Jones going down with the injury. That made matters worse. So the Vikings win. They do it without Aaron, who's got the hip injury now. It was tough, tough to watch. And the Jets are now 2-3. and three, And that is not the start that I envisioned for this team. And I'll tell you right now, if I am – if I'm New York – I am absolutely making sure they can pull that trade off for Devontae Adams. They need more weapons. And is it even going to matter if you can't protect Aaron? Is it even going to matter if number eight gets beat up the way he did yesterday to that Vikings defense? Because remember, we're back here a week from tonight, Adrian, with the Bills and the Jets. And then they got to go play the Steelers and the Patriots on the road. 
So you could say next Monday it's going to be one of their biggest games in a long, long time. You know, maybe the biggest takeaway from yesterday is, man, the AFC East is really the two-team race. And we've kind of known this for a while now, but Dolphins, Patriots yesterday combining for 25 points. I'm not worried about either of those teams right now. And I think even with Tua back, I, the Miami is just too far gone right here. Their defense is bad, and uh, they, they can't do anything offensively even if they did have Tua. So if the Jets wanted to make a move, now's the time to do it. The Bills are vulnerable. You saw them yesterday, even though they mounted that comeback against a Texans team, which maybe is a little overrated right now. Uh, to call Houston like a Super Bowl contender might be a stretch at this point. So I feel like yep. for Buffalo right here, they're vulnerable. So if I'm the Jets, it, nothing's over. All you have to do is win this division, get into the playoffs, and see what happens. So why not make a trade uh, that could swing this entire division right here and realize that the Bills are catchable right here. They're not a great team. No, you're right. You're right. They're not a great team right now. That's another thing. The whole division is up for grabs. I mean, I watched that Buffalo game and uh, saw them lose to the Texans 23-20. So, look, the Jets beat the Bills next Monday. They're both 3-3. Three and three. So imagine that. They'd be tied after this week. So that's also a possibility. And then the Dolphins are 2-3 and three and the Pats are 1-4. and four. It is a terrible division, which is why the Jets absolutely could have an opportunity if they can play well next Monday. But that's next Monday, Adrian. we got a lot before that happening before then. We really do. And we also have two other members to welcome that are here with us right now. Alberto as well as uh, George are uh, one of our interns this, uh, this semester. Gentlemen, both of you, uh, welcome back. And uh, hope uh, the two of you had a great weekend. Yeah, I had a great weekend. Uh, it's been uh, definitely a hectic weekend with all the sports that's been going on between baseball and the full slate of football. I think that uh, the way my Steelers went down yesterday, um, it's been uh, it's been hard to stomach. Oh, yeah, that was rough. Uh, George, how was your weekend? You know what, Steve? It was great, and I'm really, really uh, happy, much to uh, the chagrin of Alberto, that the Cowboys pulled that win off yesterday night. Uh, but I also got to see the Yankees squeeze a, a win out also. And uh, I don't know. I know you're a Mets fan, Steve, but can I interest you in these numbers from Rodon, who's starting today for the Yankees? He's 1-0 against the Royals with a 2.09 ERA uh, and 12 strikeouts. So I'm, I'm really excited about him facing uh, the Royals here. You do realize that when it comes to the playoffs throughout the regular season, because nothing matters. Yeah, that's true, but I, I just thought to, that I those hate, nine I numbers to, I, hate, nice. I hate to squash you. I'm gonna, I am gonna squash your excitedness, your your hopefulness. And you're right. Maybe Rodon rolls. Maybe Rodon is just able to to destroy the Royals and conta- you know continue his domination. Uh, it's gonna be a tough game tonight. This is not gonna be easy. Uh, six five. It wasn't easy the first night, but we've got that game here. At, you know, coming up five thirty eight. We'll have it on six hundred. We got the other game going right now. That terrific game between Detroit and Cleveland. So a lot of great baseball. And you know what? You should be pretty excited. Are you excited also that the Yankees are going to start John Birdie for his professional debut at first base coming up uh, uh, tonight? That's the one thing I'm a little bit uh, nervous about, but apparently Rizzo, Anthony Rizzo, the Yankees' original first baseman who's out right now with a, a, a finger, a couple of finger fractures, has been a, a like Mr. Miyagi working with these guys. Uh, Oswaldo Good. Cabrera called him Mr. Miyagi, said that he's been a great mentor, and he made some nice stretches uh, on Friday, so I, I, I think he'll be all right. Well, you know what? Um, all I can tell you is this. John Birdie is 34 years old. And they make it sound like he's never played big league baseball before. The guy's been playing seven seasons. And he played with Miami uh, the last couple of years. And, you know, he'll give you a 280 batting average. Not much pop. But if, the, if he gets on base for the Yankees, that's all they need, right? That is all they need. Yeah, I mean, like you said, just go out, do your job. Honestly, the hitting, uh, Soto went three for five. What was it last game? And, and Glaber had a great yep. game. Verdugo had a great game. So I, I think he just needs to do his job defensively. We can't have, you know, unforced errors, uh, giving the Royals, you know, chances. So, and I think he'll hold up his end defensively. That's really all I think we can ask from him. Well, all I'll tell you is that it's going to be a lot of fun. If it's half as good as this game going on between the Guardians and the Royals and the uh, Tigers right now. And wow. I just saw the most amazing diving, sliding catch, which 
absolutely is keeping this game scoreless. Man. Unbelievable. We just saw that it over was, here. That, yep, and it looks like they just caught a runner, and uh, this is wild. There's some controversy going on here, and now we got the umpires out. I mean, it was an amazing dive. I think they're trying to – I think you know what I think is going on? I feel like they're trying to challenge the catch. Don't you? Yes. It seems like right now uh, the catch is up in question, but Steve, once the replay goes up, everybody will see it. What a diving catch that was. How impressive did that really look right there? And, man, uh, Cleveland hanging on despite two runners on here at the top Ooh. of the eighth. I don't know if he got it. They're gonna. I just saw a video of it when that glove came out. That is a close, close replay right now. And I don't know if that ball touched the grass it almost looked like it touched the grass before it went in his glove. That is going to be a difficult, difficult replay to review. And oh, ooh, you know what? I think he might have just gotten it. That is, that, that is as close as it gets. Let me see one more time. Oh, I think it hits the ground. I do. Oh, Adrian. So close. This is a matter of inches. I forget inches. This is like centimeters. I got to see this again. Unreal. All right. Orly, I know you're hanging on the lines. We'll get to you. We'll get to this review. We'll get to everything as we continue here on Sports Talk Live from Border City Yell House. Orly always first up to call in after a win or loss from the Niners. And in this case, uh, you know, Orly's uh, Orly's upset. I don't blame him. Lose at home to the uh, cards. We'll talk about that and a whole lot more as we continue. But first, ah, they're calling it the catch, and they're calling it an out. Unbelievable. Here's Charlie One. With traffic. Catch uh, just now for the Guardians was unbelievable. That catch could save the game for the Guardians if they can get a run in here. That was fantastic stuff. That was as good as it gets. And again, considering Cleveland's leading one game to none, and we are now in the bottom of the eighth in a scoreless game. How good has this been uh, if you like American League Central Baseball? All four of you in El Paso that can answer that question right. Uh, we got a lot to cover. Let's get right to the phones, 505-6009, and let's begin with Orly today. Orly, thanks for hanging with us. How you doing? I'm doing good. First of all, my condolences to the Broadus family. Um, Thank you, Orly. I was, appreciate you. Know, you. You, got to, you had a wonderful life, and you got to enjoy it as long as you did, and enjoy those days that you had, those memories. Thank anyway, you, Orly. Anyway, going to, going to the – I was going to call you earlier. I meant to call you. I'll call you later. But anyway um, – Going to the 49er game, they just, I don't know what to say about them. I'm not panicking yet. They're two and three. They're in a very weak division, but they've lost two within the division. Uh, two games, they were 10 points up in the fourth. In the past, you're convinced that you're going to put them away. And then, how much, what else could happen when you lose your kicker in the second quarter? But there's where your team comes together to rally and uh, and finish these drives. They got in the red zone uh, three or four times and couldn't score. Uh, settled for field goals before he got hurt. That's irritating. But, you know, it is two and three. Shanahan's known for this, starting off slow in the past. And then they hit their, their, their drive. But their schedule gets a little tighter now. They've got Seattle. Eh. You don't know what you're going to get. That's a, that's, a, that's a divisional game. And then they get the big one, Kansas City at home and then Dallas before their break. So I don't know. How much did they miss McCaffrey? Who knows? But I guess yeah, uh, that's, yeah. that's tough because, you know what? I mean, I, I would say they miss him. There's no doubt. But on the flip side, you know, Jordan Mason's been good in his absence. He really has. And – you know, yesterday, 89 yards on 14 carries. I mean, he's averaging 6.4 yards a carry yesterday, and he's got 536 yards, second in the league. I mean, I don't know how much more you're going to miss Christian McCaffrey because truth is, I don't know how much better he'd be doing right now than Jordan Mason. 
and Steve, I'll just add to that, and I think it might be more coaching related than player uh, related for the 49ers. I mean, no score in the second half yesterday after they had a comfortable lead and were in total control of that game. They were yep. honestly in total control all the way up to the fourth quarter. So no excuse for me uh, from the 49ers perspective. I blame it on the coaching staff. Well, you get inside the red zone. You've been going, you've been throwing it to a you has 147 yards. You're moving, and then they go into like a cocoon when they get in the yeah. red zone. I mean, you've got to be more aggressive. I agree. Well, you also have a lot of stupid penalties. That's coaching. That's discipline. And you have a fumble. Stupid mistakes they shouldn't be making at this time. I understand the first game of the year, but you're in the fifth game. But it is what it is. You know, you got to just play it out and see what happens. And just hope you get into the playoffs. I think they're fine. I think they'll right the ship. There's too many superstars on this team not to right the ship. But anyway, going real quick about UTEP the other night, I, 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 it was hard to, to stomach the game. I couldn't go to it, but I watched it on TV. Um, it's just, uh, I think he's going to be all right, but he's, I think he's going to have to realize he's going to have to recruit. Division one style ball players. I think the Austin P ball players are great ball players, but they're division two. The reason they're division two, you're going to have to go and start getting a little bit bigger offensive line and defensive line. If you want to compete. That's just my opinion. I think we'll be fine. I think you've got a couple wins coming up, uh, winnable games. Of course, I don't think it'll be this week, but. Yeah, you got Kino, what is it, Kenoa State, you got New Mexico State. Oh, and by the way, to all you Aggie fans, how about that New Mexico State East team called Vanderbilt? It's all New Mexico State. That Pavia is I, tough. What a tough kid. Yeah. You're not kidding. I mean that's a it's a win for the ages, right? That's the best way to put it. It's a win you dream about. No. Huh? That's, that's the kind of win you dream about as a, as a quarterback. Oh, absolutely. That's why I called New Mexico State East. So, all right, guys. You have a good day. Thanks, Orly. We'll see you. Yeah, I mean, listen, uh, that's going to be the storyline. By the way, I love the fact that after that game, I don't know if you saw this or not, Adrian, but oh, I, I love Diego Pavia putting the NIL inquiries out there and just trying to, you know, like he should – cash in as much as possible right now oh i thought you were gonna say did you hear his unfiltered um you know statements to the reporter right after that went viral on social media i saw that for sure uh i saw his 70 family members who all came <laughs> from new mexico as well i saw the field goal post uh torn out out of vanderbilt oh, and yeah. being paraded in the streets of nashville i mean i'm so happy for vanderbilt we're we're in a world where vanderbilt football is relevant what what are we living Living in in 2024. Yeah, you're not kidding. And I guess uh, Aggie fans are probably, I don't know, are they happy or are they upset? Because, I mean, they're not there anymore. So they'd probably be a little happier if uh, they were still around, right? That's That would make the most sense. And by the way, Diego Pavia did Dan Patrick today. How about that? And then he sent out two hours ago this uh, this tweet. For NIL inquiries, hit my agent. And he put out an Albuquerque number with uh, the quote, Vandy, we turnt. I love it. I love it. I feel like, you know, Pavia should be a star in college football. Steve, is this the new model? That's my question to you. Is the model, let's build a program in the group of five and let's copy that model at the highest level uh, with, through the transfer portal and through NIL and through hiring and money? Because that's basically what happened. Jerry Kill and his staff goes all, you know, some of his staff uh, gets poached away from Vanderbilt, all taking over the common football yeah. program they take away the players that they really like including Diego Pavia and, and they grab UTEP Stephen Hubbard in the process by the way and then they have success Vanderbilt's a school where they historically don't have success in football listen to this this is even better okay so Vandy is apparently they've got their own NIL it's called anchor impact okay anchor impact and it says here gifts of all sizes make an impact so thanks for considering a gift of one of the following amounts. Okay, $40.35. 
because the final score was 40-35 Vanderbilt. $166.84. Vanderbilt outgained Alabama in rushing yards, 166-84. to 252-yard NIL gift. There was 252 passing yards versus Alabama. $1,005.24. That's because it was Saturday, October the 5th, 2024. They're getting very clever. Uh, $4,035. From that 40 to 35 final score, or the largest donation, $28,934, which represents a sold out game at First Bank Stadium with 28,934 in attendance. You know, that's what jumped out at me is the craziest thing about this whole deal is that Vanderbilt has a stadium that sells out, Adrian, with less than. 30,000 people in attendance. Yeah, I love that right there. I, I love all these numbers. It made me think of UTEP. I thought, like, man, if UTEP has some success like this, they'd probably do something similar. And it's a good idea, actually. It's a great fundraising opportunity uh, for a school like Vanderbilt because uh, it's not just their alumni, their fans, and all that kind of stuff. It's everybody across the country who seems to be rooting for this team right here in Diego Pavia. I mean, think about it, Steve. Yeah. Last year, it was upsetting Auburn with New Mexico State. This this year, it's upsetting Alabama, the Crimson Tide, who were number one, just beat Georgia last week and took this week off against Vanderbilt. I mean, I'm just, I'm very impressive. And for Diego Pavia, he sees the moment. For Jerry Kill, you have to say that he made the right move. He made the right decision. And I guess it just also goes to show you that uh, you, got, you, you can never take anybody for granted, right? You can't do it. You never know what's going to happen. You just never know. You can't take a quarterback for granted, that's for sure. That is for sure. We'll come back with more in a moment as we continue here on Sports Talk, 505-6009. But first, here's a bottom of the hour Sports Center update next. Thank you, Steve. Let's go over to some news today out of Dallas. Rookie defensive end Marshawn Nealon for the Dallas Cowboys escaped a season-ending injury to his right knee, but he will need surgery that will keep him out four to six weeks, according to a source. An MRI today showed that uh, the ACL is intact, but he will need arthroscopic surgery for a meniscus tear. If he had suffered a torn ACL, his season would be over. Provided Nealon's surgery and rehab go well, he could return in mid-November after a stint on the IR. Despite the good news, it will impact a Cowboys defensive line that could see Micah Parsons miss another week with a high left ankle sprain while Demarcus Lawrence is still on injured reserve with a Liz Frank injury to his right foot and is also looking at a mid-November return. Nealon was injured on the fourth defensive play of the Cowboys' 20-17 win against the Steelers as he was taking down quarterback Justin Fields. He was helped to the blue medical tent before he was carted to the locker room for more examination, and then he did not return of this one. Let's go over to another story today. This is a hurricane-related news today coming out of the NFL. This is interesting right here. In advance of Hurricane Milton, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are leaving the Tampa area uh, early this week, and they're heading to New Orleans on Tuesday ahead of their Week 6 game at the Saints. The team was able to secure the necessary hotel accommodations in New Orleans to avoid having to take another flight on Saturday. According to the National Hurricane Center, Milton has strengthened into a Category 5 hurricane with maximum sustained winds of 160 miles per hour over the southern Gulf of Mexico. Also, real quick, back over to the baseball score. Scoreless still between the Tigers and the Guardians, top of the ninth of this matchup, and runners on first and third with Detroit threatening to score. Back to Steve here at Border City Alehouse. Thank you very much. As we continue right now, 505-6009. That is our telephone number, 505-6009. 35 past as uh, Sports Talk rolls along. Again, the uh, this game is just getting better and better and better. And by the way, if you didn't think that way, if you thought Quan's catch was good, there was a Manzardo drive to left center that looked like it was about to clear the wall because it did and Parker Meadows scaled the fence and took a home run away from Kyle Manzardo this I mean this look nobody knows much about the Detroit Tigers and the Cleveland Guardians but they are playing 
terrific baseball. Terrific baseball right now. Yeah, and both of them are playing for an opportunity to, what, try to dethrone the Yankees or try to make a World Series run, which is really uh, possible for both these teams right here in this situation. I mean, uh, but if you're the Tigers, you feel like, man, you got all this out of Scooble early on from the starting effort. you got to close this out and you got to win this game, knowing that you have a zero on the board against Cleveland here. And right now uh, you've got Kerry Carpenter up for the Tigers. Runners on second I'm sorry, first and third with two outs, and there's a 2-1 count, and Classe is throwing 101-mile-an-hour fastballs right now, trying to get out of this jam. He throws hard, Steve. He's got swagger. I like him a lot, uh, Classe, and and he's somebody right now who is uh, trying to take command of this mound here, but trying to also get out of this, this situation right here. Two outs here, top of the ninth. Let's see what he could do. You're not kidding. We're live at uh, Border City L House. Uh, again, 1506 Lee Trevino getting you ready for the Chiefs uh, and uh, the Saints. Oh, beautiful off speed. How about this? A 92 mile an hour changeup. Man, I just saw that uh, foul off um, the the batter. Man, I was impressed right there, Steve. He's, he's throwing some heat right now here to close this out. I mean, you know, it used to be where a 92-mile-an-hour fastball was the norm. That was a 92-mile-an-hour off-speed pitch. And, you know, he's throwing like 94-mile-an-hour sliders. It, it's, it's pretty wild. It really is. So Carpenter trying to survive. The Tigers trying to push a run home here in the top of the ninth. Again, Cleveland leads the best out of five series, one game to none. So these games are important. And, by the way, speaking of baseball, how much drama – is going on in that Dodgers-Padres series after what happened last night with the uh, Dodger fans. And Carpenter just launched one off a of Class A that's going to leave the yard. A three-run home run. A big one right now for the Tigers. So Carpenter gives Detroit a 3 nothing lead as the Cleveland fans stunned as their closer just gave up and surrendered a three-run jack with two outs here in the top of the ninth. And a 2-2 count, Steve. All you needed was one strike, and you're you're pretty much uh, going to the bottom of the ninth or sending this one to extras. Oh, man, that is brutal, brutal right there for the Guardians. It is. And by the way, Carpenter knew it the minute that ball left his bat. I don't know if you saw his reaction after he swung, but he knew that ball was flying out of the yard. And uh, that's tough. And by the way, Class A pitched last inning. That's the difficult thing about asking your closers to give you multi-inning saves. Some can do it. Some can't. Yesterday in the Met game, they uh, they were able to get to Edwin Diaz in his second inning of work. Here's Class A. Not everybody can deliver two-plus innings of relief when you need them to, especially in a tight game like this. So, yep, Kerry Carpenter, the man for Detroit. Tigers will try to close out uh, Cleveland in the bottom of the ninth and tie this series up at one game apiece. And I mentioned the Dodgers and the Padres right before Carpenter went yard. How crazy is that series, especially with the Dodger fans throwing things on the field yesterday? Apparently it was baseballs that yeah. delayed the game and had some of the guys, uh, some of the uh, Padre players like Tatis and Profar worried about their safety during that ball game. Yeah, the big one to me was the Tati stuff, right? Because uh, Ta- Tati, I don't want to say he was welcoming anything of it, but he has something like, again, that rivalry right there is intensified with Tatis. Public enemy number one for uh, anybody in L.A. is Fernando Tatis. The way that he was dancing at the fans and like uh, like kind of egging them. Yeah, and egging them on, <laughs> Steve. Yeah, there you go. I like that a lot. Uh, egging them on is the, is the other uh, PC term to use for this one, right? here but uh it was it was hilarious it was so funny to watch listen to this stat by the way about class a he allowed five earned runs all season long can you imagine a closer who only gives up five earned runs for the entire season man that's tough right there and he and he looks as disappointed as anybody right now just walking back to the dugout and he ends up giving up three just this inning so yeah it has been a rough go here in the ninth for the Guardians' closer, who now, as you mentioned, will be departing with a runner on first two outs, and uh, the guards down three to nothing here in the top of the ninth. So there is some incredible baseball. 
We have games going on now. We have a game tonight with the Royals and the Yanks. You heard our uh, our intern George talk about that with us. Um, it's all happening here at Border City L House, where their new happy hour specials every day from three to seven include four dollar twenty two ounce domestic drafts, four dollar crown, four dollar ornitos, four dollar Tito's, six dollar ale house nachos, uh, along with chips and queso and loaded fries. So. If you want to enjoy some nachos and uh, and, and also a 22-ounce domestic draft, you can do it for 10 bucks. Happy hour going on every day, 3 to 7, here at Border City Ale House. 505-6009. We'll take a timeout, come back more in a moment as we continue at 600 ESPN El Paso. In the El Paso Metroplex, if I can just add to that uh, what was mentioned there in the news that uh, I-10 West Transbound makes it is closed. So also I-10 West and Mesa, the CD lanes West and Mesa, pretty much stacked up because I-10 West and Mesa, they closed the left lane. So that area all under construction right there. On the west side also, Mesa Hills and Sunland Park, we have a crash. Jump to the east side, Lee Trevino and Burnham, we have a crash. Montwood at Bay City on a crash. George Theater and Gateway West on a crash. And then we have in Central Gate, we said Geronimo, your shopping area crash right there. Leo's Restaurant, 7520 Rimcon, 78 years in business, original family since 1946. Don't forget the delicious Sopapillas, home of our first Sopapillas in 1946. And that's the Leo's Restaurant, 7520 Rimcon, Charlie 1600, ESPN El Paso.
One out, bottom of the ninth, three nothing. Detroit trying to even their series with the Guardians in a game of peace. As by the way, this will uh, also uh, continue through the rest of this week. They'll take tomorrow off and then come back uh, with more games. In fact, I'm looking at the schedule right now. Tomorrow you have Phil's Mets and Dodgers Padres, so the AL games will be off tomorrow. Then on Wednesday, we're going to have all four games, so that's even better. We'll have uh, game three of this Guardians-Tigers series. We'll have game three of the Yankees-Royals, and then game four of the Dodgers Padres and the Mets Phils. So, yeah, a lot of really uh, great storylines right now. It's, uh, It's a lot of fun to watch, and that being said, let's go to Gator Richard. He wants to get in on some SEC football talk as uh, we continue. Uh, Ten in front of five right now. What's up, Gator? How are you? Go Gators. Go Gators. Hey, so how many field goal posts were ripped down this weekend in the SEC? Do you remember? No, I just saw the one in Vanderbilt that was being paraded through downtown Nashville. Because Tennessee got upset too, right? Yeah, they did. They did. And that goal post ended up somewhere. I don't know if they threw it in a river or what, but I don't know where anyway, the goalpost in Fayetteville was uh, was taken. If you if that's the question, I'm not sure. I I do see the goalpost getting torn down, and I see exactly what you're talking about. I'm just not sure where that goalpost went. Hey, look, I'm going to tell you something right now. Okay, you might find this hard to believe, but I once saw the goalpost taken down at a UTEP game, and fans. <laughs> And fans lifted it all the way up to the top of the stadium along the east side and threw it over the side of the the top of the stadium. It's on YouTube, Richard. It's on YouTube. So who'd they beat, like uh, Franklin High or? No, nah, I think they beat Rice. Is that right, Adrian? Was it Rice when they took the goalpost down? I think that's right, Steve. I think that's exactly right. That was for the WAC. That was winning the WAC championship, I believe. And I think it was after that uh, win right there, they they tear down the goalposts. The yep. Uh, and, yeah, and I remember Bob Stoll calling us up and telling us the next week that it was like either twenty grand or fifty grand for new goalposts, and. He was okay. He's like, you know what? If we can get that kind of a crowd and keep winning, we'll uh, we'll be all right. Uh, we'll be all right with the goalpost being, uh, you know, torn down. Oh, by the way, I think it's happened on two occasions for UTEP, but I know it also happened in 1997 when UTEP upset 25th ranked BYU 14 to three. That was when they actually took the goalpost and threw it over the stadium because that is when they ended BYU's 128-game touchdown streak. So the fans went ahead, and they tore that goalpost down, carried it all the way up, and then, and I'm talking, that thing was complete. Like, they got rid of that goalpost, but the base was still there, both uprights, and they carried that thing all the way to the top and then threw it over. Okay. Which is a pretty, which is a pretty impressive feat, if you ask me. So, so do you think that that's going to happen under under uh, the tenure of John Boy? Oh heck, I couldn't tell you if that's going to happen. Who knows? They're five games into his uh, into his UTEP season. I couldn't. I mean, I'll tell you this: if UTEP could ever win, and um, oh, they took both goalposts down. Oh my God! I'm watching the video on that game in '97. And when fans were about ready to throw the goalpost over the top of the stadium and they heaved it over, they took the other one down too. So that was a wild scene since both goalposts made it, uh, did not make it out alive that night. So pretty crazy stuff. Do you remember when UTEP uh, would have like sheriffs around their goalposts when they were pretty good in the mid 2000s, Steve? It was like yes. the Mike Price era. There'd be a couple, and it was it was pretty funny. But the one that I remember was the Houston game when they upset Case Keenum uh, oh. on that Thursday night game or whatever that was on ESPN, and there was a bunch of sheriffs around the goalposts thinking it would happen again. That's right. That is right. So, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. So anyway, look, it's what happens. Big wins, the goalposts come down. Simple as that. Appreciate the call, Gator Richard. Thanks for getting in. Go Gators to you. Although, uh, 
Gators are what? Let me check the standings right now in the SEC. Adrian, if I'm not mistaken, Florida is one and one in the light in the league, three and two uh, overall right now. Eleventh in the SEC, but they've won two in a row. They've won two in a row. So maybe there's hope for uh, Gator Richard after all. Although they got to play at Tennessee this weekend, that might not be pretty. L, big L. In fact, three of their next four games are coming against Tennessee, Georgia, and Texas. <laughs> it's it's not it's not good. Three L's not in a good. row. Oh my God! All right, we're gonna come back. Our second hour next. Bernie Olivas and our Tony the Tiger Sun Bowl watch. We're gonna do it on a Monday instead. We're live. Uh, Border City L House, fifteen oh six Lee Trevino with Sports Talk and six hundred ESPN El Paso. And Adrian brought us. And we've got hour number two right uh, here, ready to start. Uh, we're with you for about another hour and ten minutes or so. We'll take you up till kickoff for Kansas City and uh, New Orleans. Monday night football live from Border City L House, fifteen oh six Lee Trevino, where I believe uh, UTEP football with um, Scotty Walden will be here tomorrow night. So you can come back down tomorrow, enjoy that show with John Teicher. Hey, by the way, uh, the L House is open at 10 a.m. on College Football Saturdays, and they've got $3 Modelo, Pacifico, Corona, and Premier cans. That's 10 a.m. on College Football Saturdays here at the Ale House. Also, new happy hour special every day from Thrift's Domestic Drafts, $4 Crown, $4 Ornito, Sentitos, and Loaded Fries. they got their all-new menu. They're adding things to the mix. They've got new sandwiches, new burgers, new apps. you got to come down here and check it out. It's Board of the Yale House, the home of sports talk, each and every Monday. And the giveaways tonight are to see of our friends at all that music and video. Collect place at the Fountains of Fair parking lot. The Chiefs and Saints bottle opener keychains. A senior, the Saints and Chiefs Blu-ray DVD, along with a Funko Pop for uh, the great Patrick Mahomes. And you know what? It's not all about music posters, items, their boutique, and, and sports goodie guys. And my thanks to uh, George and Paul Reynoso. Uh, Paul is as big a UTEP fan as you get, folks, and a lot of fun spending some time with the Reynosos today. Also, thanks to our friends at the Kenya Tio Softball Booster Club. We are going to be giving away some uh, comic strips for this Thursday night. It's part of the Kenya, our, uh, they, and they donated some of these for us to give away. It's this. We're going to give those out. we got three pairs for thursday night thanks to the kenya teo softball booster club we also have golf at horizon golf so today with that being said time to welcome back to the show the great bernie olivas executive director of the sun bowl association as we gear up for another week of the tony the tiger sun bowl watch and bernie if you love upsets well then this weekend was your weekend wasn't it that was not the great Bernie the picker uh, showing up because it was a rough week for me and all of all, all three of us did not do yeah, very we were, well. Yeah, we were miserable. Yes, we, we were. were miserable. I followed up my uh, my my top score week with just five out of ten. I believe you were also five out of ten. And I remember when I told you, I said I think Adrian had a breakthrough week. Really uh, got himself back into the race. Then I looked clean. Unfortunately, that was not the case. That was not the case. You're absolutely right. It was yes. Uh, I, actually, Steve, i got to correct you. You had five, so now you've taken a five-point oh. lead over both of us right now. Wait a minute. You both got four out of ten. I thought Bernie got a ten. Oh, my yeah. gosh. I blame and, this and, all. Yeah. I blame it all on the transfer portal. <laughs> <laughs> you can't tell who's going to win anymore because players are going all over the place. And some teams are picking up great players and playing well. And others are losing out, but that four out of ten is pretty bad. But I do want to give uh, congratulations. Number one, we had a similar uh, thing as last week. We had somebody who works at the Sun Bowl. I want to get a shout out to Gabriela Lopez, who was one of our nice. interns, and uh, she correctly picked eight uh, eight winners, but won on a tiebreaker over David. I believe it's Saint Clair, who also had eight, but the total number of points scored was seventy seven. Gabriela scored. Uh, entered 67, and David the second at 55. So congratulations to both Gabriela Lopez, who actually won, but as an employee of the Sun Bowl, is un- ineligible to win any of the prizes. So David S- St. Clair is our winner. Way to go, David. Congratulations. And, uh, man, that's good to see. And 
just goes to show you, you never know what's going to happen until you play, which is why you got to play, right? you got to play the Chick-fil-A Tony the Tigers Sun Bowl Selectum Contest every week. Absolutely. And like I said, it gets more fun, but it's getting more frustrated every Sunday morning or every Saturday night when I start checking scores. Oh, well. Well, I feel pretty good knowing i got a five-game lead over the two of you. I'm starting to – I don't want to say I'm getting cocky because that's far from the truth, but this is how I want to spend my October, guys. I'm not going to lie to you. It's, it's, I, feel, I feel pretty good right now about that five-game cushion. Now I want to build it to ten. Well, you know what we're thinking. You know what Adrian and I are thinking. We're thinking the opposite. We're going to have to start taking some chances. But it's time for a nine-point week. Here. Yeah, absolutely. A nine out of ten week. All right. Well, you know what? We can talk about that with our Chick-fil-A Tony the Tiger Sunball Selectum Contest for week number seven. Bernie, before I get to the games this week, any takeaways from you from the wild upsets we saw really uh, all week long? That, you know, like I said, that's college football, and there's going to be some more upsets this week and the rest of the year. Uh, boy, I tell you, that Vanderbilt-Alabama game was something else. Uh, couldn't believe it, and to, and to, and to know that... Uh, that the quarterback that was just playing 30 miles up, up up the road here is now taking a SEC team and beating the number one team in the country. That's I know. Uh, yeah, that 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 was uh, something to watch. So uh, I think it's going to continue to be that way, and we'll see how how it works out. All right. Do we have a uh, guest picker this week, or is it just going to be the three of us? Because I know we're doing this normally on Tuesdays, but the reason we've got you on right now, Bernie, is punt, pass, and kick is going to be happening this time tomorrow out at the Sun Bowl. That's correct. The, the Peter Piper Pizza punt, pass, and kick contest will take place tomorrow at the Sun Bowl Stadium between 5 and 7 or 4.30 and 7. There is still time to register. As a matter of fact... You can show up at the Sun Bowl if you're between the ages of 6 and 15. Take a copy of your birth certificate. Again, no cleats are allowed, you know, during this contest. And, uh, and, and you, can, uh, you, can, you, you can compete tomorrow afternoon at Sun Bowl Stadium. Again, the winners will get to be able to ride on a float on Thanksgiving Day at the, at the Glacine Vice and Interman Injury Lawyer Sun Bowl Parade and also be recognized on the field at the Tony the Tiger Sun Bowl football game. So if you haven't registered yet, Go ahead, go online, go to any Peter Piper Pizza location, or come to the Sun Bowl, at Sun Bowl Stadium tomorrow afternoon, uh, beginning at 4.30 to register. The competition will go from 5 to 7 p.m. tomorrow. I believe the first 100 people that show up tomorrow, uh, you know, beginning at 5 o'clock, get shirts, right? Everybody get a T-shirt. Last. They're going to get a Gatorade bottle. They're going to have get nice. a surprise from, from a Goodwill Industries. And, of course, they'll get some to drink on their way out. So, yeah, Good. come on out. It costs absolutely nothing. So just show up. Again, the one thing we do ask, there, there are no cleats allowed in this competition. Uh, and you must use uh, sneakers, tennis shoes, uh, no cleats. And, of course, just a copy of your birth certificate. It doesn't Don't want the originals hanging out there where they can get lost. So we'll accept, yeah. we'll accept a copy. All right. Are you ready to give it a go and uh, try to climb, along with Adrian, back into this thing? Always ready. I've got a lot of catching up to do. All right. Adrian, are you ready? I'm not ready. I'm looking at this blind again, uh, and maybe I should oh. change my strategy, Steve. Or maybe I'm going to win. Maybe so. Maybe so. All right. Adrian, I'm going to start with, you know, normally I start with the guest, then I start with Bird, then I go Bernie and you and me. How about you, we start with you today? Maybe maybe that'll change it up for you, Adrian, and it'll bring you a little luck. What do you think? I think that's a great idea. Let's do it, Steve. I'm, I'm all in. All right. We'll go with number 16, Utah, kicking it off this week. They're on Friday night uh, going to a Tempe and Mountain America Stadium to take on the 4-1 and uh, Sun Devils. The Devils are 1-1 in the Big 12. So are the Utah Utes. Uh, both teams are 4-1. and Identical records, yet Adrian, Utah, six-and-a-half-point favorites uh, on the road against Arizona State. You can't come to the Tony the Tiger Sun Bowl Chick-fil-A Selectum Contest and do everything the same way every single week, Steve. So my philosophy is going to be simply fade myself. I'm fading my ideas, my takes, okay? So I think Arizona State's going to win. I think it's going to be a great game out in Tempe on a Friday evening. It's going to get a little crazy out there for the Sun Bulls who've been trending upwards. So I'm picking Utah in this game. I'm fading myself. Uh, I think the the Sun Devils are going to win this one, but no, I'm going to pick Utah because uh, I've been wrong lately. All right. What about you, Bernie? <laughs> you think that Arizona's going to win, but you're going to pick Utah. Let me try to figure that one out a little bit here. 
I think that Utah is going to bounce back after losing at home to Arizona last week. I am taking the Utes. So we're all in agreement. I cannot see Utah losing to Arizona and Arizona State in the same season. I I just can't. I can't either. So, all right, we're all in agreement going with Utah over Arizona State. Uh, Adrian, that's not the way you wanted to start this off today, is it? No, I'm actually really upset here. Now I want to fade everybody else here and here and then say, okay, it's Arizona State, so I could be a little different. Now I, I've got to stick to this one here, Steve. Uh, I, I I'll, get, I'll get a point off you guys, but it might not happen here. Okay, let's go with number 10, Clemson. Next up, they're going to be taking on Wake Forest in Winston-Salem um, at the uh, Allegacy Federal Credit Union Stadium. Now... Wake Forest is two and three, one and one in the ACC. Clemson's tenth in the country. They're four and one, three and zero in the ACC. Bernie, the Tigers are twenty point favorites over the Demon Deacons. Yes, and uh, I don't know if they'll if they'll cover twenty, but they're ab- they're definitely going to they're definitely going to win. I am taking Clemson. That makes two of us. I will go with Clemson on the road to defeat Wake Forest, Adrian. Yeah, there's no way Wake Forest is pulling off a comeback or an upset, I should say, in this matchup right here. I know they beat NC State, but that's a depleted Wolfpack right now, not the same NC State that we uh, saw to start the year. So give me uh, Clemson, no question about it. Okay, game number three, and uh, this is another good one. It's going to be uh, happening uh, 10 a.m. on the CW Network. It's going to be 4-2 and two Georgia Tech visiting 3-3 three and three North Carolina at Chapel Hill at Keenan Stadium. Now, Georgia Tech is 2-2 two and two in the ACC, 4-2 and two overall. North Carolina is 3-3 three and three overall and 0-2 oh in the ACC. Georgia Tech, six-point road favorites. Now, I went with Georgia Tech last week. They were one of my five wins. However... I just don't think I can see Mac Brown 0-3 to start the ACC. I think they'll bounce back, win their first conference game at home, and both of these teams will be 4-3 and after the weekend. Adrian, give me the Tar Heels at home. You know, with uh, Mac Brown on the sideline, the sideline shots are the most heartbreaking to me, Steve, because I know Mac Brown. I remember Mac Brown for being a winner. I remember him for uh, winning a national championship for Texas, for instilling uh, life into this North Carolina program. I don't remember for him being this sad on the sideline. So I'm, I had the thought like you. So now I got to go Georgia Tech. Fade myself. I thought North Carolina in this one. So I'm going Georgia Tech in this game. Bernie, I, I cannot see North Carolina. I, I said I was there. I saw them practice. I thought they were a really good football team, and I still think they're a really good ball, football team. I don't know how they've lost those three games, but I am going to stick with the Tar Heels. I'm going North Carolina. Okay. That means, Adrian, maybe you'll pick up a valuable game or you'll, you'll fall a little farther back, which takes us to our fourth game, and then we'll uh, play a little trivia, give somebody a chance to win some tickets to the Tony the Tiger Sumble, and we'll come back and finish this off. Let's get to Washington and Iowa. The Huskies, 4-2 and two overall. 2-1 two and one in the Big Ten, traveling to Iowa City and Kinnick Stadium to visit uh, the 3-2 and two Hawkeyes, who are 1-1 one and one in the Big Ten. Iowa, two-and-a-half point favorites, Adrian. So this Iowa team right here is pretty interesting to me because they've got a running back right now in Johnson. I believe it's uh, Caleb Johnson, who is one of the top uh, NFL draft prospects at the running back position. They've got uh, they've got Cade McNamara as their quarterback, who's been up and down, but he is a veteran. He is a senior leader. So I was thinking going into this one, well, Washington's riding the high. They've got all this excitement off beating uh, Michigan. They can definitely go uh, in a road game and lose. But I reflect a couple weeks ago, they lost to Rutgers. So I'm picking Iowa in this one at home. It's going to be an ugly game, and they win ugly like 13-6 to or something like that. Bernie, your turn. I am going the other way. I think the Huskies will ride a little momentum, and I think they are going to go down to Iowa City and beat Iowa. And I've been to both stadiums. They're both very, very loud. They're both very, very great fans. But I'm going with the Huskies. I'm with Bernie. I'm also, I picked the Huskies earlier. I'm staying with that pick. So I think that win over Michigan is going to give them some big-time confidence to go on the road. This is not Rutgers. feel like uh, they're going to be able to come out on top. So give me Washington here, just like uh, Bernie said. All right, 
We've got four down. We have six to go. More in a moment. But first, how about a little trivia, Bernie? And give somebody a chance to win some tickets to the Tony the Tiger Sumble. Oh, absolutely. I got it. We've got a good question here. I don't know how long it'll take for somebody to find the answer, but it's not an impossible, not impossible question here. So, for two tickets to the Tony the Tiger Sumble, there are three schools who are undefeated in the Sumble with three and O records. Name the schools. There are three schools who have who have an undefeated three and zero record in the Sun Bowl. Name the three schools. Away from Border City L House, getting ready for Monday Night Football, Kansas City and uh, New Orleans. We also have the Yankees getting ready to play uh, in their NLDS series against the Royals. Yanks leading at one game to none. Little known fact: uh, Bernie Olivas is a huge Yankees fan. Will you find a way to get to any of these playoff games during your uh, Sun Bowl recruiting uh, job? Because you've done it before. You've pulled that off in the past. Not, well, I don't think there's any uh, college football games that I could go see in New York or in, uh, or in L.A. Well, I guess the UCLA-USC could probably, if we were visiting game down there. But now I'll be watching on TV or listening on the radio. But uh, the, well, Yankees, the Yankees didn't finish out the season I thought they finished it on a, on, on a downward trend, so we'll see. Hopefully, they can still put it together and and uh, and and get to the and get to the series. But uh, you know what? They didn't finish very strong. Maybe you can go. Uh, let me think of how this can work. What if the Yankees play Cleveland, or they play Michigan, I mean, Detroit? I mean, and you parlay one of these uh, these Pac-12 schools that are in the Big Ten with either a trip to uh, Columbus or Ann Arbor. That you know, like I said, that's always a possibility. I just Johnny saw that. I did see him, I saw him play a couple of weeks ago up in Yankee Stadium yeah. against the Red Sox, and uh, that was a great experience. Of course, they you know they beat the Red Sox as I, I was hoping they would, but uh, mm. uh, and I saw them early in the season against the Diamondbacks. So uh, nice. I've had my fill of Yankees already this year. Adrian, I heard we got a winner during the break on trivia. That's right. Pablo Villa got this one exactly correctly, Steve. Uh, and uh, and a great trivia question, by the way, as well. Bernie, who are the three teams we were looking for? The three teams who, have, who are three and zero in the Sumble are Alabama. Believe it or not, it's been you know played here three times, and I believe they play. They beat uh, who did they beat uh, SMU? They beat Washington and they beat Army while they were here. And then Oklahoma is also three and zero. And Wyoming, know all teams, and a future, a near future opponent of our UTEP Miners are also three and zero in the Sun Bowl. So congratulations to Pablo, great job. We were going to make it a little bit difficult because there are seven teams who are who have played at least twice in the Sun Bowl game that are undefeated. But uh, we thought we'd go with the three that, that are that are three and zero. And again, Alabama, Oklahoma, Wyoming are all three and zero at the Sun Bowl State at the Tony the Tiger Sun Bowl. Didn't uh, Jim Kick, who played many years with the Miami Dolphins in the 70s, didn't he play for the uh, Wyoming Cowboys in one of those 70s games? Yes, he did. He absolutely did. All right. Well, listen, good Jim trivia Kick. quiz. I K- like that. I-I-C-K. I remember That's right. two eyes. That's right. Make, yep, exactly, exactly correct. All right, let's get right back to it. We'll continue with game five of uh, week seven. Of the Chick-fil-A Tony the Tiger Sun Bowl Selectum Contest. If you want to play with us, you can do it by going to sunbowl.org. That's sunbowl.org. And game number five has the 11th-ranked Fighting Irish of Notre Dame hosting Stanford. The Cardinal are 2-3 and three this season. The Irish 4-1. and one. This game is at Notre Dame Stadium, Bernie. And uh, the Irish, as you would expect, three-and-a-half touchdown favorites. 24 points over Stanford. Yeah, I think they'll pull they'll pull this one together, and I think they'll they'll beat they'll beat the, the Cardinal uh, this Saturday. Uh, they're playing they're playing pretty well. Like I said, their schedule is not the toughest the toughest this year, but uh, but I think they're they're going to win this one. They're going to win a lot more games the rest of the year. What about you, Adrian? Yeah, I'm not worried at all here for uh, Notre Dame. I, I think Stanford, I was praising them a little last week, and then they've kind of been on a, a bit of a slide as, as of the last two weeks. So give me the Fighting Irish in this one, no question. All right. 
That makes three of us. We're all unanimous uh, going Fighting Irish. Bernie, I understand during the break you and Adrian are trying to conspire to get back into this contest by changing the pick em rules. Is that correct? Yeah, there's, poss- there's possibilities. You always got to try to make things better. And fair, but uh, we'll talk about it later on. We can't do that right in the middle, right in the no, middle of our you, picking. Listen, if you want to try to change in the middle of the game, I mean, I'm just kind of <laughs> no, curious. No, I like the rules, by the way. I like the rule change. And, and if we're going by our voting rights here, uh, me and Bernie will have two votes yes. in this system. I'm outnumbered. Can we give Alberto a vote along with our intern, George? Or since they don't play in this contest, they're not, uh, they're not allowed to get a vote. Is that probably how it works? <laughs> yeah, I like the latter. So. Yeah. I, uh, I I thought so. Um, Bernie, would you like to reveal your rules change? And by the way, Adrian, this came on the app from First Down Dash, listening to the show right now online. He said, Adrian is pulling a George Costanza and doing the opposite. Right. I, I'm definitely doing that right there. Uh, and you know what? Me and Bernie, the, the brain trust back here at the River Oaks Property Schoolyard Sports Studios, we were wondering, you know, maybe you should pick first, Steve. So then uh, we well, could pick after the fact. So then we could try yes. to catch back up. Because what if you just pick against or with us True. or against us uh, well, the entire time? I brought, up well, that, I got, I brought yes. that up last week. Remember, I said all you got to do is pick what we pick and, and yeah. we'll never catch up. Well, so I, I got figured good news that if, for you. If the, if, the, if, if the leader picks first every game, it gives yeah. the other two a chance to, you know, to try to catch up. Of course, they'd probably have to go against the grain and probably pick right. a, a big underdog to try, to try to catch up to you. But, you know, there's an advantage for you as well or for the leader Listen, as well. We have five games left. If you would like to do that over the last five games as the leader, I am willing to take that risk. If you are, if, if the two of you are game, no, that's fine with me. That's not fair. We will start. Maybe we'll start that next week. But we got to start the way we got to finish the way we started. Okay, that means I'll be up on this one. It's number twenty-two, Pittsburgh hosting Cal. The Golden Bears are winless in the ACC at zero and two. They're three and two on the season, while Pitt. 5 and 0, 22nd in the country and 1 and 0 in the ACC. Pit 3 point favorites in this game and guys, I like the Panthers. I really do. I like what I've seen from uh, Eli Holstein this year. He has 15 touchdowns, just 3 interceptions. They've got a nice running game and and a nice offense in general. So, I think Pitt's going to score some points and Surprise! It's just a three-point game. I'll go Panthers here in in this one, Adrian. Okay, so the Panthers in this one, you you factor in a couple things, right? You factor in travel. How did travel work for Miami going all the way to California? You know, they ended up squeezing past the Bears, but it took the final seconds for them to squeeze that out. Uh, Thirty-nine, thirty-eight. They were down for almost the entire matchup. There, Cal traveled all the way to Florida State and lost that one. That was the first uh, win for uh, the Seminoles at that point and so i'm thinking to myself all right it's got to be pittsburgh so i'm taking cal road upset here uh and five and oh has to go away at some point so give me cal all right cal it is bernie you know you know pitt's five and oh uh and nowadays it's it's really hard to go undefeated but how many wins in a row can you go i am going to say that pittsburgh is going to go six and oh i am taking the pit panthers all right I like it. Bottom of the hour as we continue here on Sports Talk. Let's do one last Sports Center update because then we'll have the Cowboys at the top and we'll get into Monday Night Football in about 45 minutes. Adrian, take us through our final look at Sports Center update. My thought was uh, he asked. ESPN or ESPN asked Shams, what's the price? And uh, he named the price, and that price tag was met. All right. Well, congratulations to him. Now, we are uh, going to the home stretch, gentlemen. Adrian, it's going to be back to you for what should be a really good football game that uh, maybe you will see a big upset. Number four, Penn State. They're one of the last of the undefeateds, 5-0, and 2-0 and in the Big Ten, having to go all the way over to uh, L.A. to take on USC at 3-2, and 1-2 and in the Big Ten at the Coliseum. 
Penn State, five and a half point favorites. Adrian, can they get it done? Well, I thought so. I thought going into this one, Penn State, you know, you have a big win against UCLA. No problem with them. No problem with Illinois. That game gets uh, hyped up like like crazy, and then they end up winning by two touchdowns in that matchup. And they don't really have any competition prior to that. So I'm thinking in this one, it's all Penn State. But again, I'm fading myself, so I'm picking USC just because of that. All right. Adrian fading himself. Will that work? What do you think, Bernie? I don't think it's that big of a stretch to take USC. I think, yeah. again, uh, I think USC will be played tough. Uh, Penn State, again, I know we talk about the travel all the way across the country. Some It might affect some, it might affect not another, but I am, take, I am taking the Trojans in this one. Listen, guys, I don't think that's a bad pick at all for two reasons. Number one, Penn State has played four of their five games at home. They have not traveled like this, and USC has looked much, much better at home than they have on the road. That being said, USC just lost to Minnesota 24-17. to That does not give me confidence that they will be able to handle the Penn State Nittany Lions. I will take Penn State here to win on the road. That will take us to game number Eight, number two, Ohio State visiting number three, Oregon. Uh, this is the game of the week in college football. Could be game of the year. And both teams are undefeated at 5-0. and Both teams are 2-0 and in the Big Ten. And Ohio State, Bernie, three-and-a-half-point road favorites over the Oregon Ducks. There's been a lot of games of the year already. There's been some tremendous football games being played that have come down to the wire with some pretty good schools. Uh, well, Ohio State's very good. Oregon State's very good. Ranked two and three. But I am I am going to go. I am going to go with the Ducks at home. I think they'll be ready. They'll be pumped. They that crowd will be all over Ohio State, and I am going with the Ducks. All right, Bernie, are you picking the Ducks because they are a Sun Bowl team, or does that have nothing to do with it? Nothing to do with it. Uh, I usually go with our Pac-12 and our ACC schools, but I I just think that they're going to pull this upset. Yep, I understand. What about you, Adrian? This is Will Howard versus Dylan Gabriel. This is, uh, you know, just uh, this is Quinn Judkins versus Jerron James. Um, this is Tez Johnson versus Jaden Smith. I mean, there's so many stars on both sides of the field. I was going into this one thinking Dan Lanning, Dan Lanning, Oregon football. And so because of that, this is going Ohio State. I feel like it's a coin flip, though. You could take either team, probably feel good about it, and I feel good about fading myself and go in Ohio State. I'm with you. Uh, well, look, you picked Ohio State. Bernie picked Oregon, which means i got to disagree with one of the two of you. I'll take Ohio State on the road here. Oregon did have their hands full with Boise earlier this season, but both teams really haven't played anybody yet. They haven't been tested. They've played some of the weaker teams on their schedule. I think it's going to be a great game. I could see Oregon winning this game. In fact, I was very tempted to pick Oregon, but something tells me Ohio State will get the road win. So I will go Ohio State here, which leaves us to our second-to-last game, going back to the ACC in this one. And uh, we've got Syracuse, the Cuse, 4-1, and 1-1 in the ACC, visiting 3-3 three and three North Carolina State, 0-2 oh in the ACC. Now, you look at North Carolina State. They lost to Wake Forest at home in a tight one. Uh, They they gave up 59 points to Clemson, and they gave up 51 points to Tennessee. A couple of high-powered offensive attacks. Meanwhile, Syracuse, off to their best start in a while. Um, That included the win against Georgia Tech. Their only slip-up, the two-point home loss to Stanford. Now, They beat UNLV on the road, 44-41 in a wild one. I'm taking Syracuse on the road, guys, only because I feel like they've got that high-powered offense and NC State has had a hard time shutting down teams that can score. So, therefore, I'll take Syracuse on the road, Adrian. There's no fading going to be happening for me on this one right here. Give me Kyle McCord. I think he's one of the most NFL-ready quarterbacks in the ACC and Syracuse. Uh, I got them road winners against NC State. Bernie? 
Not I. I am going with the Wolfpack. I think that NC State is going to break out of their slump, and they have been in a slump. You're right. They've been giving up a lot of points. Uh, I think they're better than that, and I, have, I am going with the Wolfpack. I'm taking NC State over Syracuse. All right. Time for one last game. That's Kansas State, 18th in the country, visiting Colorado. Um, four and one. Both teams are four and one. Colorado's two and zero in the Big Twelve. They've been involved in some incredible games. K State's uh, one and one in the Big Twelve. Kansas State, a four and a half point favorite. Adrian in Boulder. So Kansas State's got the guy who has a lot of swag and loves to run the football at the quarterback spot, and he has awesome hair. Avery Johnson. You look at him; he's got the locks, the the blonde locks. And uh, this guy's only a sophomore, but he's lighting it up in the Big Twelve. He's so much fun to watch. Uh, he's definitely in contention for Heisman considerations, uh, and he's somebody who two weeks ago they destroyed a ranked Oklahoma. State State team. So Kansas State, they give me all the reasons to pick them, so I'm picking Colorado on this one, fading myself and uh, going with the Buffs. Opposite picks continue. Um, Bernie, your turn. Well, you know, Colorado's got, a Heisman, <laughs> Colorado's got a Heisman looking quarterback themselves over there on that side as well. Uh, Kansas State, four and a half point, four and a half point favorite. Uh, Colorado's at home. They're both four and one. And maybe this is just a wishful thinking type of thing. But uh, I am taking Kansas State because Colorado's winning too many games right now. And I'd like for them to lose a couple more. Maybe they'd, maybe they'd be in our picture come, come December. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm taking K-State. I'm taking K-State also. Look, K-State beat Arizona when they were 20th in the country, convincingly 31-7. They beat Oklahoma State when they were 20th in the country, 42-20. to I mean, I know they had that one slip-up at BYU, but I like the Wildcats here, guys. So just like you, Bernie, I'll take K-State on the road, which means tiebreaker time. Total number of points scored during that Ohio State-Oregon game Adrian, how many do you have? I had 59, so I'm going to stay with that. 59. Bernie, your turn. You know, both teams score a lot of points. I'm going 64. Oh, my God. Now i got to change it. <laughs> I knew I should have gone first. All right. Bernie, you said 64. I will go 65. How about that? I'll go 65. All right. Because I had 64 originally down. For those of you wondering, the over-under on that game is 52, which seems very low. So... I'm with the two of you. All right. Good news, everybody. Somebody's going to gain ground uh, on me because there's a lot of picks dif- you know, differential between uh, the three of us this week. Yeah, there is. We'll see what happens. Of course, it's been tough predicting. Uh, you know, who would have thought that number one, number four, number nine, number 11 were going to lose this last week? Uh, it's, been a, it's been a crazy year, so we'll see what happens. All right. Again, the Peter Piper Pizza Pun Pass and Kick coming up tomorrow night. Bernie will be there at the Sun Bowl. In fact, we're expecting a pretty good crowd, aren't we, of, of uh, youngsters that are going to be participating in this, both uh, boys and girls. Absolutely. The weather's, the temperature's going to be in the 80s. Uh, it's going to be a beautiful, a beautiful evening. Come on out. Again, there's still time to register. You can register right up to the time the competition starts. So let's see a bunch, of, like I said, if you're between the ages of 6 and 15, boys and girls, Coming out to the Sun Bowl Stadium for the Peter Piper Pizza Punt Passing Kick Contest. Awesome stuff. All right, Bernie, great job. Thanks for coming in, and uh, we'll look forward to doing it again with you right back here uh, next week on the show. My pleasure. All right. From Bernie Olivas uh, right out to uh, more sports talk. We are hanging with you live out here. Border City Ale House, 1506 Lee Trevino. Going to be with you till kickoff for New Orleans and uh, Kansas City. You can come down, watch with us here at the Ale House. Take advantage of those uh, $4 22-ounce domestic drafts, $4 crown ornitos and titos, and uh, $6 Ale House nachos, chips and queso, and loaded fries. It's happy hour every day from 3 to 7 right here. 1506 Lee Trevino, Border City Ale House.